I remember being at Lawrence Rockefeller's ranch out in the Tetons, the JY Ranch, which, you know, the, those of you who don't know, the Rockefeller family gave the whole Grand Teton National Park to, to the U.S. government, but they kept out a really beautiful ranch there at the base of Teton Peak. And he had me out there with a group of other people back some years ago and uh, before he passed away. And Lawrence, um, David Rockefeller, Chase Manhattan Bank, was the one wanting disclosure. David did not. David was the big banker guy, petrodollar, boom, no, hell no. One night I was out under the stars with Lawrence and everyone else, they sort of, you know, he wanted some FaceTime just with me. And we were out under the stars, beautiful, crystal clear with one of the original Remington uh, statues of the, a Native American on, on a source back looking up at the stars like this, beautiful. And Lawrence, um, turned to me, he says, we really need you to, to get this done. I'm working full time as an emergency doctor, okay, taking care of shootings and stabbings and car wrecks and four children and a golden retriever and blah, you know, a, nor a normal life, mostly at that point. I use the word normal very broadly. I think normalcy is greatly overrated. But anyway, so, and, and I said, well, I need your help. He says, well, I, I, I can do things behind the scenes, but I'm not gonna do anything I said, are you afraid for yourself? He says, oh no. He says, but there are members of my family already raising hell with me that I'm even doing this much. Because as you know from the Project Starlight documents that I started that were the AP, the Associated Press sued the Clinton Library. He was hosting the President and First Lady there, the best available evidence and all this was being presented. There were a lot of discussions going on during the Clinton years. So he, you know, he said, no, I mean, I have family members who are really, really upset that I'm doing this much. So blood is thicker than water. So in that case, he didn't want to, you know, he, he wanted to keep the peace in the family. So there are all kinds of reasons why various people that we've been able to meet with, what we have got to do, we either need to find a way that the public will really support the funding, which is so far, as I said, is about 4% of what we need. Or we have to find maybe a dozen people who can put in five, six hundred thousand each. So we need someone to head up that because I don't know anything about fundraising. I mean, I'm a doctor, um, so that's just not my wheelhouse. Or we need to have someone bring us a technology that's operational that can be open source, which is why we're launching this Star Challenge and Award. And um, I'm hopeful that while we tried that many years ago. Ten years later, perhaps there are people out there who really are ready to come forward with something open source, or if there is something open source on the internet, as is being claimed, someone builds it up and can get it to us so we can move it out. Why is that important? Why isn't just having it on YouTube enough? How are you gonna stand up a whole new industry? This is not just like some, you know, like a 16 year old can do an app and put it on the internet and become a centimillionaire. Great. This, you actually have to build something because it's, it, you know, it's actually tangible. It's not virtual. So you, how are you going to get to the poor of the world for their villages and homes, this type of generator? Someone has to build them. Someone is going to have to build the thing that's going to replace the engine in your car. Someone's going to, and it ain't going to be General Motors. Someone's going to have to build the thing that's going to replace your heat pumps at your house so that those are just a generator system that runs your house off the grid. Someone is going to have, and that is a heavy industry that is going to have to be, I hate to use the word, capitalized. And the cap, the cap on this, it's huge. It's like the Marshall Plan that we had for Europe to rebuild Europe. This is like the Marshall Plan for the whole planet and we're in an emergency. So we're going to, once we get to this first stage, then we're gonna to have to recruit stakeholders and people who really do wanna see this change. Because once the genie's out of the bottle, I think that'll happen. You know, what the indications I got at this meeting I was at with the, these 120 leaders from various sectors from around the world, was that there's a, a certain number of people who once this is out and inevitable, they're happy to be first to be second, and they'll jump on. So we need to create that initial push and that's what we're asking people to help us do.